just a second. But here's a list of the teams in the Big 12 who had players drafted from rounds one through seven. This does not include anybody signed once the draft ended Saturday night. TCU, not a surprise whatsoever that they led the way. They had a hell of a team, heck of a bunch of playmakers. <laughs> most they of them are on eight. the Chargers. <laughs> and, and most of them. <laughs> Three. Yeah, Travis, Avila, and who's the other one? No, it's the Rams. That's uh, the Rams. That's right. The I'm Chargers sure. took uh, Quentin Johnston. They took Darius Davis, so they took Max Duggan. And then Avila and uh, Travis are both on the Rams. Well, it's because so LT's, in the, the, LT's in their war room. He goes, no, we're not. We're taking him. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so TCU, that's not a surprise with eight players drafted. Um, I think it's still a surprise. I mean, that's a lot of guys for TCU to have drafted. Um, that's not, I think, something they're going to replicate all that often. Um, you know, Sonny Dykes is a good coach. I think he's a great fit for TCU. I remember when his name got brought up for Baylor. Uh, I remember not being in favorite at the time because I just didn't – Look, he was Cal Sonny Dykes. Um, he wasn't even SMU Sonny Dykes at that point. He was Cal Sonny Dykes, which we know that that was just not a good look for really anybody involved. And quite frankly, at the time, they needed more than just a football coach. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how well equipped he was to roll in and handle all that needed to be handled the way that Matt Rule handled it. I, I don't know that just everybody else could have rolled in and done the exact same thing. Um, you know, I'm sure others could have done similar or just as well. Um, I don't think he was, like, the only man alive that could have kept the ship floating. Uh, but I don't know that just anybody comes in and just, you know, for sure does. And so I had some questions about Sonny Dykes back then. But he's a hell of a coach. He belongs back in Texas. He's as as good of a spot as he could possibly imagine with TCU. And, you know, that's another thing is, like, he couldn't have had Kaz Kazadi at Baylor with him mm -hmm. like he does at TCU. Like, there's nah. couldn't have Kendall Bryles as a new nah. OC. If, you know, so there were some, some things he's able to do in Fort Worth he couldn't have done – uh, and Waco had had history been different all the way back then, but it would have been if we could somehow like reverse that and see like six seven years later like what would Sonny Dykes have done in Waco? That would have been interesting. But besides, uh, he's he's done a great job in the one year at TCU, but he inherited a hell of a roster. Mm -hmm. Gary Patterson deserves some credit because uh, those eight guys were primarily, uh, if what not all of them, recruited by him. I'm trying to think if there was like any transfer uh, in that group or not. I don't know off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, I mean, GP did a great job. They obviously developed their guys, and it all bubbled up into the greatest year, uh, I mean, outside of one result at the very end of the year and, well, the Big 12 championship game too. But, really, you'd rather have had that last one. So, yeah, I, I don't think that that's just a, hey, good and move on. That's one that you're, this is going to stick out for them for a very long time. Take advantage of the uh, momentum, and, uh, and, and I think they're going to be good, but they had some players, that's obvious, they lose eight. You see Alabama lose a lot. You see Clemson lose a lot. You see uh, Georgia, of course, become the Philadelphia Eagles south. And so there we go. Texas, man, what a relief for the Horns after they've had years where there was nobody. And then a first first round pick since 2006 with Vince Young and B. John Robinson, who went number eight. Uh, we mentioned Overshown. Uh, the defensive lineman went. They had some players drafted. Oklahoma, despite that. Bad year for them. I mean, it was a terrible year for them under their standard. Had five players still but, drafted in the uh, draft on Friday, th Thursday through Saturday. They had a bad year, but they had a stud wide receiver in Marvin Mims. They had Anton Harrison, who's as good of a, a right tackle as there was uh, in this draft. Wanye Morris is a good player. So right there, there's three. Right. And I'm not even getting into, you know, the, the, the other two, but those three right there off the top, um, there that wasn't their problem was – Oklahoma's problem wasn't the top level of their guys, more or less. They still had, you know, good probably one to eleven on 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 offense, defense. You know, still need to work on it. But it was the the depth that used to come at you in waves that they did not have this year, and they couldn't withstand their. But injuries. even even those who replaced the ones but, who left, they, you, they they lost Caleb Williams and had Dylan. Yeah, Gingrich. you can't like. Yeah, yeah it's not. There, there's it's not almost a fair comparison. Texas, though, to get five uh, draft picks is really huge because for the better part of a decade, they've been turning five and four star recruits into NFL journeymen uh, or CFL players or whatever, and that's not how you get 
staying power. Look, the, like the, the goal of Matt Rule at Baylor and, and at Nebraska was to get guys and put them in the NFL. So that way when you walk in, and I guess as well, I really, especially when you have a school, whoever the next Texas is going to be, because if this starts a run for them of putting guys back in the NFL, I'll just leave them out of this argument. But whoever the next team is that might have that big popular name, said, so, well, I'm not going to go to Nebraska or I'm not going to go to Baylor. I'm not going to go here because – I want to go to the NFL, and this team is that. And, you're like, and for well, about a decade, statistically, that's not what happened. And, yeah. and you could say, well, here's what we do. You can see us, you know, every year, the commissioner saying our guys' names uh, in the draft. So, uh, But Texas doing that is after a long time of not. Yeah, I mean, they've had a couple of years they've got nobody drafted, which yeah. is fine if that's at, you know, Baylor on occasion or it's like, you know, Oklahoma State once every seven years or something or, you know, whatever. Everybody has that happen where you just – it doesn't work the way, you know, to where you have two, three guys available every single year. But Texas should, in theory. They should. Those weren't all just like, oh, well, it got log jammed and, you know, there's just nobody eligible. It's like, no, they were eligible guys. They just, you know, didn't reach the level of success that they – should have for whatever reason their own doing uh lack of development i mean you, who it, you know whatever uh there's a variety of different reasons why but um yeah i mean maybe they're they're starting to get the ball rolling there i mean that has been an inadequacy um in comparison to the teams they want to be typically compared to on a regular basis and so to have five guys and to have in particular you know, a guy like Bijan high up like that i think it's a really big deal um but, you know, I also think he's very unique. So I'm curious to see if Cedric Baxter or the others that now follow uh, can follow it up. And not only that, but Roshan goes like mid-round to Chicago. Like, what, fourth for him, I third, think? Third round. Third round. Yeah. So I was excited for that. That was that was a nice place for him to go. So that's just not an easily replaceable tandem right there. Um, I, I don't know. I think he was a fourth rounder. But um, that's not an easy replaceable tandem for them. Uh, but, you know, Cedric Baxter and uh, was it Jonathan Brooks, uh, you know, that'll that'll be a fun group to follow along with this year. But Sorry yeah. about that. You're right, the fourth round. Yeah, so I think that uh, it was a good year for them. Uh, and, and, you know, the best they've had in uh, what seems like a while, though, I, I don't know their, their numbers. Like, is that the most they've had in a quite some time? I don't even know off the top of my head. But it felt bigger because Bijan went so high, and, and that's good. That's I mean, basically, that's going to give them some momentum. You hope that's the start of some things for Sark, and then you're starting to hear about Quinn Ewers in the next couple of years and some of these receivers and, you know, more of these defensive linemen and these offensive linemen. Like, Kelvin Banks will be a big-time draft pick probably in a couple of years. So they're – they're building something there, and this may very well be the class that kind of starts to set that off a little bit. They had five in 2021. Cosme, so Osai, Taquan, Taquan Graham from Temple, Stearns, and Ellinger. Uh, they had, mm, let's see, three in 2020. Brandon Jones, Devin Duvernay, a former Baylor commit, and Colin Johnson. But there were years, yeah, 14 had nobody. That was right after Mac Brown had left in the Charlie Strong era. Um but they've always had three, five, 2007. Back in the days of the 2000s, they had big, big numbers. But in, in the decade of the last 10 years, 2011, four, 2012, three, highest pick was a fourth rounder. 2013, three, Kenny Vaccaro, first round pick. 2015, three, uh, four, five, Malcolm Brown, defensive tackle, first round pick. One I pick in 16, one in 17. And then you had five, you had three. So they've had picks, but this this was a nice one. One, three, four, six, and seven rounds. Well, it was their first first round pick. I was going to say, yeah, yeah it's so. like, that's the big thing is they had a first rounder. That's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. No, in general, they had a first rounder. It's the first time in a while that they've had a first rounder. It's been period. seven, eight years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was why it felt like a bigger deal, and that's hopefully what they can – build off of is is putting more first round type players in the in the league on a regular basis all right so then there's kansas state iowa state for iowa state mcdonald got drafted pretty quickly good for him uh, oklahoma state xavier hutchinson went very late on saturday oklahoma state with two and then tech baylor and west virginia each with one so everybody had at least one but those are the ones with the one um and then Tex was a top 10 pick. It was Tyrell Wilson who went very quickly. And now the ones who were incoming schools, Houston had four. Brigham Young and Cincinnati each had three. UCF did not have anybody picked. And I know, oh, my God. Well, they, they're somewhat young. I, we, of course, had the Mark Daniels, cut, uh, the voice of UCF, a lot of youth there. That changes. 
And that'll change even more now that where they are, because even the they're going to find you if you're talented, no matter what classification you're in. But there you go with that list. But UCF zero. That that, that I, I don't know the story behind that, but I'm sure they'll have a lot of guys back from last year. Watch Houston. Uh, Tank Dell just gets to move to a nicer place uh, now in the same city. Um, going to to the Texans. I I think that's going to work out great. I think the Texans had a great draft. Um, uh, all, all the way around, but um, adding him, they had two. Look, Tank Dell, uh, wide receiver wise, Tank Dell, and then they didn't, I think it was in the fifth or late fifth round, they got Xavier Hutchinson from Iowa State, who that guy's got the build and skill set to turn into a nice little, um, I kind of like think of him as a Michael Gallup type of where, you know, if he's open, he's going to get it. He's very reliable. Had you know. a lot of drops, and not just because I, I saw a couple of games when he had a big drop against Texas and maybe two. And then the next week he had one, too. Very talented player, wiry, and uh, and hopefully everything works out for him. Yeah, I need to go back to Will McDonald. That wasn't just him going kind of early. That was the first first-round pick for Iowa State since 1973 kind of early. So that was a, a big deal for that program to see Will McDonald go uh, when he went. Um, and I'm sure there was uh, some celebration as a result of that. But, yeah, that was, that was notable. I mean, I think – you know, the, the Big 12 having the number of first-round picks that they had, the first time they've had that many first-round picks in eons. I mean, it hadn't been since Nebraska, Colorado, and Missouri, and um, A&M were in the conference since they had, what, six first-round picks. I mean, that's, that's uh, pretty impressive. And, you know, then the other side of it is you look at, uh, okay, well, Oklahoma and Texas each had five apiece. That's very healthy and very good. Um, but you look at the other four teams, and despite UCF hanging a big fat zero, the other three had 10 guys total. So you wonder, like, okay, well, what did they lose? What would it be versus this? It'd be the exact same number versus the new schools or the old schools. Texas and Oklahoma put 10 together. Three of the other four put 10 together. So there would have been zero drop-off in theory, but I know not every year is going to go exactly this way, but at least gives you some hope that – Yes, it's four versus two, but we're also going to celebrate 14-team conferences hanging over your head how many they had drafted versus 10-team conferences in comparison. So as long as we're going to do that, then, yeah, it, it takes a couple more teams to accomplish the job, but it's still the, the same output, and that's really what you're looking for for the Big 12 is to hang where you were and on occasion jump up above that. The last thing you want to do is start drowning, uh, which is the fear when you're losing two big brands like that. But as far as this year's draft goes – in the new construction, there wouldn't have been any drop-off. Years from now, maybe that's a different story, but that's why you hope BYU and UCF and Cincinnati and those schools can Houston. continue producing and why you hope that the Baylors on occasion can have their six guys a year and then they'll probably fall back to one like they did this year. But then TCU jumps up to eight or West Virginia has five or six guys one year and Tech builds up and starts having five or six guys and you can build off that. But this is the first draft in a long time where you could actually talk positively about the conference because they've gone two years in a row with yeah. no first rounders, just like we were talking about with Texas. Texas had guys drafted, but no first rounders. And when you're bringing in that type of talent like they are, that's just not, that's not going to cut it. Uh, so same thing with the big 12, you know, you want to, talk about where you are in the landscape of things you got to put dudes in the pros and they hadn't been doing that at a regular clip especially in the first round with zero the last two years I mean zero and so to have a handful of guys I think that was a really big deal and, and just hope that again it's something they can build off of and next year there should probably be some records broken because you're going to have the most teams you've ever had in the conference so adding four schools to Texas and Oklahoma for one more year I would think that they could break some records i don't know about was it five or they have five or six first rounders it's six first rounders i believe the big 12 six, six yeah so i don't know if they'll have six again but who knows maybe maybe they will all right yeah. look it, it, look if texas gets their way if everything goes texas's way yeah they could have a two or three they're gonna have you know the it, i don't know if it perfectly their way because it mean he'd be gone but if quinn ewers goes in the first round that probably means Texas kicked a lot of ass last year, next year. I mean, that that probably is what that means. Because, well, that's you know, the case if any quarterback goes in the first round. No, but, I mean, like, you know, for, for them in particular. No. So, Xavier Worthy's probably got – I mean, he's got first-round speed. You know that. Um, so, that's a guy who could probably wind up in the first round. Um, you know, so there's two right off the top of my head right there without even getting into some of the guys they've got coming back on defense. So, 
Well, um, Texas fans are relieved that they finally have that story to tell because it's been a frustration along with the record uh, has been the frustration about not cultivating enough. That doesn't mean they haven't had players drafted, but elite high-level uh, rounds. All right, on the chat room.